to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. <laughs> Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want us in one minute to just thank the Lord for the miracles and his faithfulness even in this house. Lift your voice and say thank you. Lord, you deserve our lives. You deserve our praises. You deserve our everything. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's pray one more prayer point before we sit down. Lord, visit me tonight. Change my story. Lift your voice and pray. Outside, pray. Everywhere, online, pray. Visit me, O oh God, by your word. Turn my life around in the name of Jesus. Turn my life around in the name of Jesus. I refuse to go back the way I came. I came because I believe in you. I came because I trust in you. They looked up to him and their faces were lighted. They were not ashamed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone to our miracle service for the month of October in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, we're going to be very fast tonight. Um, as we know, the security situation in Kaduna State as a whole it's not at its best. We pray. We thank God for peace here. So we we'll do our very best to make sure that um, we we are fast enough so that we can give people room to go and rest. Hallelujah. I will just um, do something very quickly that I usually would not do. A gentleman, one of our fine young men, um, wrote a book beautiful book 25 important things i wish i knew before i turned 25 and um, i went through it and it was a beautiful book and i just thought to support him and and bless him where's emmanuel emmanuel where are you <laughs> praise the lord hallelujah no 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 please stand please stand a good leader Listen, doesn't maintain followers. A good leader, according to a great mentor, turns followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. Are we together now? Yes. And um, this is absolutely brilliant that at this level, he's already reaching out to people, very quality content, intelligently written, and very sound and all of that. So I thought to support him. I usually will not do this, but I made up my mind that I was going to endorse his book. I know that a number of you have all kinds of things that you do. Um, I'm very particular about excellence. It's not enough for you to have good content. It should be something that um, reflects what you are being taught here. So this is his book. It's a wonderful book. And um, I think he wrote it, if I'm not mistaken, with a bias for those who are from maybe 24 years downwards to help them maximize 
this phase of their lives, but I don't think it's limited to just people under 25. Um, it's a very wonderful book, and um, he brought a few copies. I want to encourage you to please get it. You can drop it with the uh, PR at the PR stand, the public relations stand there, and um, doesn't mean next week you carry your book and bring. This is a particular a favor I'm doing him. We are very disciplined people. Don't go and drop your book just because I'm doing this. This is something God put in my heart, and I think he deserves it. I've watched him grow and develop his leadership. Praise the Lord. And so I just thought, let's support him. I don't believe that he wrote the book just to make money. The, the, the kind of teaching and transformation that you are receiving here, you know that um, if you commit yourself to this just to feed yourself, then you are very small. You should have impact at heart. But then as you do that, there will always be a system of reward. Praise the Lord. How much does this go for? 1,000. This goes for 1,000. So please support him. You can buy, buy for your children. Um, how many copies are here? 200. So outside, you can pick for your children, pick for a few people. And um, our teenagers, I would, I, would, I would, let me start by at least speaking for those who, to support it all. Let's see how we can support our teenagers, teenagers, our teenagers in this place. Teenagers means from 18 years. If you are 19, you are not a teenager. 18 years to 11. 11 to 18 years. Some of our young people here is a thousand, um, thousand naira. So please, you can support him, and um, let's see how we can. So we'll pick. I'll pick 50 copies, huh? And let's give our teenagers. This is, this is to support him and to support our young people. So if you know you are 11 to 18 years, after the service, you can. Behave like a responsible person. Go and stand at the PR uh, stand or wherever they would indicate for you. Please, no collecting for your child. If you are not a teenager, just go home. You can buy and give the person. That is our gift to our teenagers to support them. And God will not be happy with you when God raises someone to pay for a book and you carry it and go and throw it there. I think if you carry the book or you just buy the book and drop it or you buy for your child and they drop it, you have wasted your money. So please, our teenagers here, if you pick this book, go and sit down with another notebook and read it with all your heart. And I'm sure you should be able to see him to ask a few questions. Lord, we thank you for this. We dedicate it in the name of Jesus. Let this inspire a lot of other people who have visions but are afraid to take steps. Grace for them in the name of Jesus. We pray that you bless Emmanuel. We speak to this book. We give it life. We give it wings. Let it go far in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm very proud of you. Praise the Lord. The Lord put just one word in my heart for us tonight and then we'll pray. Just one word and then we'll pray. As I prepared for this meeting, I sense that one of the things that the Lord will be doing is tonight to employ the power of prophecy. Prophecy is very powerful. I don't know how many times I will teach and encourage us believe in prophecy. Now there are imbalances here there are exaggerations here, there are dabblings here and there, but you will be mistaken to ever want to rise, ignoring the power of prophecy. And as I explored, the Spirit of God took me to a scripture that blessed me so much. Just one scripture, and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. Ezra chapter 6. By the way, wonderful, wonderful testimonies. How many of you were blessed by the testimonies? Remember that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That means that when you listen, it puts faith in your heart and you commit God to reproduce the same result. Powerful testimony. Um, 
And then for the gentleman to hear, Kai, God, eh? God has been good to us. So I hope you know that, Koinonia. Honestly speaking, sometimes we get used to these miracles. We get used to, you know, my prayer every time is, Lord, I know I'm the one you are using, but may I never get used to your power. It's easy. Coming here tonight, my prayer is not, oh God, move. Mm -mm. My prayer is, oh God, bless your people. I don't pray and say, Lord, make sure your anointing works. Um, that's, that's not a wise prayer. The issue is not for the anointing to work. The issue is that it be done as it is in heaven. Exactly what God once delivered. And I just sat down. I said, God, you have been good to me and you have been good to us as a family of faith. So I think it's a wonderful thing that I don't think we should take for granted. Praise the Lord. In all your ways, this is already a word for someone, in all your ways, sometimes we are very quick to see what God has not done. Yet the miracle is in thanking him for what he has done. The last gentleman, his testimony blessed me so much. He saw that his brother or his son or whatever had something had started. Many people will say, God, I'm watching. And God will say, you won't see the rest because you are not a grateful person. Ten lepers were sent. They were healed. Only one returned back and said, Lord, I'm grateful. He said, were there not ten of you? Where are the other nine? And he said, you, you are whole. So learn, learn to acknowledge everything. If you tell God, give me 10 naira, and someone calls you and say, I will give you money, start thanking him. Don't say, Lord, it has not come. Lord, the fact that you can think about that. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Learn this. My entire life, 80% of my prayer is thanksgiving. There is what God does for you. You almost feel guilty asking for anything again. Are we together now? The grace of God. While I sat back there, I was just watching this. I said, my God. Now this gentleman, think of what his testimony will do to the salvation of someone. These are the kinds of testimonies that will force unbelievers to go and think. You can't hear this kind of testimony and pretend they are called notable miracles. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you. Let your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Ezra chapter 6, verse 14. Ah, oh, God. What's that song? Menei da kasoni haka. Menei Where's the gentleman? He's not here. It's a chant I like. The Jews, listen, build it and they prospered. How? Through the prophesyings of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. They prospered through the prophesying, not through building materials. They prospered. They were building while he was speaking. And the Bible says the secret of their prosperity was that there was the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edo. They said they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel. God commanded it. The prophets prophesied it. The men built it and the building finished. Are you getting what I'm saying now? 
the Bible says they prospered not through the quality of their building materials. They prospered not just through the quality of their leadership. The Bible says they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet. They prospered through the prophesying. They were healed through the prophesying. Their lives changed through the prophesying. These were prophets. I'm sure when the prophets spoke to them, they said, okay, let's watch to see what happens. But they forgot that God confirms the words of his prophets. When I found this scripture, it blessed me in no small way. So I can prosper through prophecy. I can prosper through prophecy. Prosperity there doesn't just mean to have money. It means to excel. It means to do well. That means my life can change. You've heard me say it again and again that the prophetic is powerful. When the prophetic is used accurately and within the context of its relevance, there is no limit, no limit to what it can produce. Very simple scripture tonight. They build it. So the Bible is honest to tell us they were building, but that the energy, the spiritual factor responsible for that prophecy is not the dexterity of their building but through the prophesying, not the prophecy, the prophesying, continual speaking, not that he spoke once. They didn't just prosper through his prophecy, his prophesying. So he said, in the name of Jesus, God bless you. And they came back again. We're building and he said, you just build while I speak. They prospered through the prophesying. I have seen what prophecy can do. The Bible is full of the wonders that happened to men when the spirit of prophecy was allowed to find expression. The power of prophecy was classically shown in the vision of Ezekiel. The Bible lets us know that Ezekiel was taken to a valley that was full of dry bones. Listen carefully. The Bible says the bones were very dry. Not only very dry, the bones were not together. The fact that you cannot find it does not mean it's not available. The bones were there. They were out of sight, but they were still in existence. Waiting for prophecy to bring them together. Are you getting what I'm saying? For as long as a prophetic word did not come, those bones remained there. And then he says, son of man, can these bones live? He says, only thou knowest. And then he said, prophesy. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. When God commands and you prophesy, he confirms. I prophesied not as I wanted, not as I chose to, but as I was commanded. And the next thing that happened was there was a sound. The Bible says that shaking and bones began to look for themselves. Bones talk of structures, structures. Son of man, prophesy again to the four winds and say, O winds, breathe upon this slave. And he prophesied again as commanded. And the Bible declares that the wind came entered into these bodies without life and they arose an exceeding great army. I believe with all my heart that's what God is going to do over someone's life. Son of man, can this situation live again? Son of man, can your life live again? Son of man, can your finances live again? Can the fire upon your life be rekindled again? Can the doors be opened again? Again means once upon a time, they were not bones. They never started as bones. They started as an army. Something happened and reduced them back to become bones that were very dry. Another incident, the Bible says that the sons of the prophet were with Elisha. 
And they said, where we meet with you is too small. Let us go beyond the Jordan. And the Bible says he granted them permission. And while they were cutting the tree, the axe head fell. And one of the sons of the prophet said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. You thought that the prophet would sit down and say, Talk, what do we do? He said, no, where fell it? And he showed him the place and he carried a stick. A stick. God's methodology sometimes can be strange, but it works. That's why you have to walk by faith. Listen, very simple teaching tonight, but it will change your life. And he threw that stick and against gravity, the axe head began to float. Another time, there was hunger in the land of Samaria. The hunger was so bad that the Bible records that women were eating their children. Nigeria has not gotten to that level. I'm not sure of any nation in the world where people have been hungry. I'm not talking of cannibalism as a spirit. But that hunger will make a mother. Imagine your child and you look at your child and carry your child to the kitchen and cut your child and eat a whole child in one day. Two women. Remember that was the agreement. There was no record that they shared that child with any neighbor or anything. Imagine the hunger. That means it was not a natural hunger that will make people eat a, a plate of food is not up to a child's head. Yet two people ate a whole child. Is that a normal hunger? No. And by the next day, it was the turn to eat the child of the other woman. And she protected the child. And that was where fight came from. That means hunger can bring fight. That means one of the principles of peace is abundance. That when there is enough, there is love. There is understanding. Is that true? Hunger brought a contention between two people who were once friends. But that's not my point. The king comes and then finds out that two women are fighting and the king gets angry. and say, where is this man? Where is this prophet? Let's, 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 the anger. What is happening? Why is this land in a state of famine and drought? Bottom line, the news reaches the prophet and all of that, the king wanting to kill him and all of that. And then the prophet prophesies and says, by this time, if the prophet said abundance will come, it would have never come because he did not add a time component to it. Notice that every time the prophets speak, they carry the realities in the realm of the spirit that are timeless. They are called timeless possibilities. Possibilities with no time frame attached to them. It is prophecy that allocates the time for their manifestation. Listen very carefully. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of possibilities with no time allocated to them. Listen carefully. What you call time is only dependent on two things. One, that your life synchronizes with God's predeterminate counsel. Are we together? Or number two, that by the power of prophecy, a time is allocated to that possibility are made to find expression on earth. It is this reality that can allow to shift things that would have happened in your yesterday but was hijacked by spirits because the realm of the spirit has timeless possibilities. Prophecy can shift what would have happened three years and bring it into your tomorrow and make it happen. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Very powerful. Remember, you cannot do anything about time. Once time passes, that's it. But the Bible tells us that prophecy is able to lift things and bring them into the future and rename them and give them dates to appear again. So if a woman is supposed to have had three children in her 15 years of marriage and the devil hijacked her womb, what prophecy does is that you can speak to that woman and God will take those children that would have been and bring them and the woman will be pregnant with triplets. You see that? 
prophecy. The victory of the saints is at the mercy of their understanding the operation of the kingdom. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. Please listen. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. The victory of the saints is dependent on their comprehending the operations of the kingdom. What I call the ordinances of heaven. God's system of making possibilities manifest. That is the reason why we continue to press in the spirit. Like spiritual archaeologists. Exploring the height, the width, the depth of the ways of God. And like archaeologists, when we find something that we think is worthy of note, we treasure it. The Bible says the kingdom is like a man who lost a pearl. Is that true? And the first thing that he did was he lit a candle and went to the room and started sweeping that room to find it. The Bible also talks about the kingdom as one who went and found a worthy jewel and sold all that he had to buy the entire plot, that entire estate. So we continue to search and the Bible says everyone that seeketh finds. If you are serious enough and desperate, the spirit of revelation will come. You will never find the secrets of the kingdom being casual. Lord, if you, if you will show me, show me. Are you not God? Open my eyes, let me see. No. You will not reward anyone who approaches you with that kind of laxity. You can discern diligence. He is the rewarder of not them that seek him. Them that diligently seek him. Lord, I won't let you go. Open my eyes. Show me the key. I, I, I admit that I don't know much, but Lord, open my eyes. And then the spirit of revelation comes. The angel came and told Daniel, he said, I am come to give you understanding. Daniel prayed and said, I'm not leaving this place. Lord, you must give me understanding about the times and the strategy and what to do. Twenty and one days he was there traveling. And then... The angel came, granted him access to revelation. And he said, I, Daniel, understood by books. It was not just a book like opening to read. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. So, the, you must not only know what God has prepared for you. You must continue to explore the systems allocated for making it your reality. Ephesians 4 verse 18 is an anthem in this place. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Alienated. That means that your life does not become a reflection of what God has said. And the Bible says, it doesn't mean he lied. But that something about your life and my life. There is a level of understanding. Understanding of what? Not just an information. The ways of God. Are we together now? Please give me this. This is a bottle of water. Look up, please, everyone. This is a bottle of water. Now, it is true that swan water gives me a guarantee that if I open this bottle, I'm going to have an enjoyable experience. Is that true? Now, you have given me the bottle, but there is a technology to open it. If you turn this thing clockwise, it will not open. Is that true? The system of opening it is to turn it anti-clockwise and keep turning it until the lid removes. As simple as this instruction is, you can die of test. Not because you are not powerful enough to lift the bottle. You can struggle turning this clockwise. And then it will look like swan water has calmed you. Whereas there is a deficiency in your understanding. Now notice that you can do this and grow old doing it. And a little child will come and say, my daddy taught me, come, let me show you. And just turn this and in two minutes, the water is there for you to take. It's a little key that opens a very big door. How many of you have lost your key and you had to stand outside? You can see the yam from the window, but you can't eat it. Why? Because a key between you and whatever it is that you prepared, 
someone was careless enough to make sure that key was missing. A small key that you can put in your pocket, yet that key kept you outside. As educated as you are, you are still outside. As rich as you are, have you ever lost your ATM and you stand angry as rich as you are? They just made a transfer and you are hungry. The ATM is looking at you, you are looking at it. The difference between you and your breakthrough is that ATM. Imagine how small things cause big trouble. Small key, ATM. That's the same way one spiritual principle you should know that may be the missing link. You've done step A, B, C, D. Step E, which is the last step, you may not know and stay there for 10 years until God by his mercy comes. For some of you, that last step is what you are getting tonight. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have done what you need to do. Hannah went at Shiloh. The Bible says Hannah prayed and prayed and prayed and they looked at her and thought that the woman was drunk and all of that and, and the prophet looked at her and said, I mean, what kind of irresponsibility is this? You are drunk in the temple? And she said, no, my Lord. She was communicating her travail. All had been set except prophecy. We don't just build with intelligence in this kingdom. We build as prophecies upon us. They build it through and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai. Are we together now? And the prophet spoke to her and she had a child supernaturally. It looks very simple. I have prayed for people and sometimes spoken over their lives quite honestly, jokingly. And I've been amazed at the way God honored it and their lives changed. Could this be the missing link? That you have done what you know. The shop is already there. The goods are already there. But for some strange reasons, the customers do not come. Your certificate is already there. The application has been submitted. But you are building with intelligence. You are building. But the prophecy that will make that building finish. The Bible did not say they started building. It says the building finished. This is a secret that worked in my own life. This is the secret that is working in this ministry. They build and they finished through the power of prophecy. I continue to explore the wonders of prophecy, especially the creative dimension of prophecy that you can speak over someone's life. You can imagine this dear lady and a prophetic word is spoken. Let me tell you this. You know I told you something. Anything that is a blessing is not tangible. It's not physical. Whoever gives you anything that you can hold and calls it a blessing. Yes, we say that you were blessed but the truth is you were supported. Blessings are always spiritual. Read your Bible. You don't bless men with what money can buy. You don't bless people with material things. So I can give you money. You say I bless you. It's true. But the truth is that what the blessing is not the money you are holding. The blessing is the favor that brought that money. That's what you are giving. So if you have the discernment when you go to the shop, you drop the money, not the favor. Your lack of knowledge can make you take that money with the favor on it and drop in that shop and leave. And the owner of the shop just collects your money and adds it in the midst of that. And he's surprised. In two months, he has opened another branch. He doesn't know what happened. Whether you know a law is there or not, once you engage it, it works. For your favor or not for your favor. I jump from here by mistake, I will fall. Gravity will not say, no, I'm aware he's joking. It's an example. No. There are no examples with laws. You don't swallow food and then the food says, I won't reach your stomach. I know you are, I will, I will come out when you, no. Laws don't care whether you are joking or you are serious. They work. Bishop Oyedeko would always say that God told him while he was, I think in the US, he said, get down and make my people rich. Yet, he doesn't necessarily 
organize business seminars or symposiums. You would think that, okay, you should be teaching people the dynamics of finances and all of that. And then this man will say, okay, come with everything you are building. My job is to keep speaking while you build. And you find out the buildings always get completed. When you build while a voice is speaking, it must finish. The same way a voice was speaking while God was building. God himself used that principle in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God said, before he would do anything, he would say, let us do it. And then he would do it. When there is your formula for building, alongside the prophetic, that building must finish, no matter what it is. Are we together now? Yes. Many of us build. We get the raw materials. And then we say, based on this and that and that, I will build this great destiny. In the name of Jesus, we, we can be well-meaning. And then we start the building and find out that at a point we are pegged to our surprise. And you can't trace, based on your architecture, nothing is wrong. That building is supposed to finish, yet it does not finish because there are laws in this kingdom. We build and prosper through the prophesyings. Not just through intentions. It was Bishop Oyedepo who would share his experience with Archbishop Benson Idahosa that he carried a seed, you know, he came and he was going to run an errand for him and he ran the errand very fast and came and waited for him and he looked at him and wanted to reward him i hope i'm right with the story and then he opened you know a compartment full of money and then bishop Oedeko would not take and say no i don't want this and he looked at him and blessed him and he says from today god has given you the grace of on time that before a need arises, the supplies are there. Now, that's how to bless. So he can now go and build because there is prophecy. Listen, unbelievers know this. They prepare their work together. Then they now go to dark powers and say, I'm ready to build. I'm ready for election. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for the scholarship. I'm ready to build the business. I have done everything. I just returned from Harvard with my certificate. But I know that a body without a spirit is dead. Therefore, let there be prophecy on it. They carry that thing and they finish what they have started. God is a finisher. That means that when the hand of Zerubbabel begins something, that hand should complete it. But the systems that make men complete the things that they want to do, that system is largely not understood. And tonight we are going to use one of those keys. The power, not of words. There is a difference between words and prophecy. Words are utterances. They are powerful on their own. But prophetic words are utterances that are directed and backed up by an, an anointing and God's integrity. You don't prophesy, you don't speak as you are commanded. You speak, you are a human being. How are you? But you don't prophesy just the way you want. You are commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. We had a very strange miracle that happened in Kano. Those of you who followed, it was a very strange miracle. I don't know whether they were Christians or not. Brought in somebody who was mad. Those of you who were there or followed. And that gentleman was, didn't even know he was in a church. And the one that touched me most was someone three days had been in labor. That baby would not come out. And while I was speaking, the gentleman got angry and called the phone and said they should give it to her and put it on the loudspeaker. As I was speaking, there and then, the woman gave birth, right there in the hospital. Someone that they were saying after, maybe they would induce or do something, or maybe a CS or so, and the baby just came out, like that. When the systems of the kingdom are put in place, 
you will wonder at the power of God. The potentials of God are short-circuited when his systems are not understood. So we, he continues to be misrepresented in our lives, which is not a product of his inability, but the product of our not understanding his ways. Are we blessed now? There may be a man of God here. You have done all. But that one thing you need is the power of prophecy. Jesus went to the temple from age 12. He had been preparing and doing everything. But at age 30, he went to look for a prophet. And John said, I won't baptize you. Jesus said, you are joking. Suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. It's a formula. And when he came out of the water, the heavens opened. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven for 30 years until prophecy opened his heavens. So the fact that you are carrying the word, it can be under a closed heaven. Prophecy opens it up. The word for breakthrough, the word for speed can be under a closed heaven. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, my heavens must open tonight. of the Jews build it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. They went forward through the prophesying. They got jobs through the prophesying. They carried their miracle children through the prophesying. They received mantles and graces through the prophesying. Their lives turn around through the prophesying. Shalakata prakato serekaria. Make sure you are praying. spirit come hold this for me no Ejimi, don't worry let him do it hold the tray not the water put it down and hold the tray this is how words are in the realm of the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words carry things words are trays in the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words contain mysteries so the word can carry a cause. The word comes to you and returns back, but the cause remains. The word was a messenger. The word can carry a blessing. You can receive the word. It returns back because words are living, so they move. When they come, they go back. Words don't remain. It is what they carry that remains. So shall my word be that goeth forth. I send it as a messenger. When it delivers, it returns back and says, I have done what you sent me to do. Then he sends the word on Aaron again. Listen, words are not just talkings. Because when Isaac, listen, blessed Jacob, Esau came and said, don't you have any other thing? He said, it is finished. Was the talking finished? So words are not just speaking. You are a boy. Yes, you said that is word in English, but in the realm of the spirit, words are the factors in speakings that contain spirit and life. So I can sit down here and put favor on a word and send it as a messenger. The courier system is called prophecy. So you can the moment you see words coming to you, you start rejoicing because you know that the words is like it's like you know, I, I I do a lot of conga and jumia, and sometimes they just call me and say, We are within vicinity, can we come? 
and the moment I hear the sound of your van, do I need the van? Do I need the package? The package that comes will say conga. I quickly open the package. Then there is another package. I open everything till I get what I'm looking for. That thing, the van will return back because it needs to come back again. But what it brought is what stays with me. Many of us waste words because we think it is in the speaking. Be blessed. That thing is not the English. It's just a word prophesied to you. It transported something spiritual. So when it enters your ears, the thing that was attached with it drops in your spirit. And then the be blessed English now just goes out. So you know that words were spoken. And then you can't even remember everything that was said in the service. But then you go back and find out your life starts changing. Someone who has no business blessing you. And you say, Lord, when did that happen? That is why deafness is a terrible thing. Are we together now? That you cannot hear. The word cannot come. The entrance of thy word. So, listen to me. Understand how this works. Come, stand here. This gentleman, just stand here. This is favor. This is what this guy wants. This is favor. This is what he desperately needs. And God carries that favor and puts it upon words. And the messenger is not a prophet. The messenger is the prophecy. The prophecy is what brings it to him. As many as received him, meaning you can reject him. The word can come, but you will say, it's not trade that I want. I need this. And then the word returns back with the gift and say, I was rejected when I got to that address. Then when you pray again, God will say, by my mercy, let's try again. And the word comes and you don't receive it. And it goes back. He sent forth his word. When they received the word, the word healed them. The word delivered them. So he sent forth healing. He sent forth deliverance. But they were carried in a tray called words. This is the mystery. Men receive. That's why when you see people talk about the word, word, most people, even those who teach it, they don't even really fully understand what they are saying. They think it is speakings that gives you intelligence. No. Words convey information. They convey thoughts. But that's not the only thing they do. They are mighty systems of impartation. Words. I can be sitting here right now and yet I'm ministering to someone outside because the minister is really not me. The minister is the word. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means no matter where you are, the moment the words begin to come and the way God designed it is that it is your faith that determines what is put on that word. So I can sit down and say, Lord, send me a word for my breakthrough. And God will say, that's it. Everyone that asks it, receive it. And he puts that word. And you will hear me speak casually in the name of Jesus. Let doors be open. And you say, that's it. You did not see that that word was carrying something. You receive that word. The miracle in it will start working. You don't receive the healing. You receive the word. The healing was designed to work when the word is received. When you enter a city Jesus was teaching, find out whether there be a house of peace. When you find it there, he says, let what is on you rest there. When you don't find anybody that receives you, let your peace rest with you. Meaning there are things that rest, return, are received, are rejected. These are some of the things that govern the results that we get. Look at the wonderful, that adorable lady that shared her testimony from Lagos. Words transcend time and distance and she can receive that word for her brother or friend and HIV of 24 years. When the word gets to HIV, HIV is a spirit, so it knows it's not words that he's seen. Remember when men saw the word, they saw a man. When demons saw the word, they saw the life-giving power of God. They looked at Jesus and ah, 
You see, not the, this guy, this, this 33 year old body is fooling people. This is not 33 year old. This is the ancient of days. Hidden in a 33 year old body. But men were looking at the son of Mary. But principalities and powers knew what they were seeing. When a prophet saw Jesus, he said, Behold the lamb. You would think it's an insult. You are calling me an animal. He was speaking prophetically. The same way you can look at Gideon and say, Oh, mighty man of valor. And Gideon says, Where are you seeing this? Because the word is also a mirror. The same way native doctors use water and look at your destiny, you can use the word and look. There's a beautiful picture most of you have seen of a young cat that looks at itself through a mirror and sees a lion. Very powerful. So you can come here weak and then God comes to you and says, no, you are not supposed to be that. And he says, this is your image. And he says, Lord, I agree. I see it. The word is received. The power, as many as received that word, he gave them power that came with the word to become. Power to become. As many as received him, even to them that called upon his name, he gave them power to become. Power to become an apostle. Power to become a prophet. Power to become prosperous. Power to rise and shake whatever it is that brought you down. Power to silence the voices of darkness. Thank you. This is how fathers blessed throughout the Bible. All the sons knew that they didn't they didn't wish for any inheritance of goat or sheep they gave them those things but they knew it was temporal but the moment they received something on their head the fathers told them bye bye and never cared to find out are you doing well because they knew that what they sent them with was designed to make sure that all things work together let me tell you if someone counts come sam come this lady if this is a husband and wife and you greet all of them and give them plates Huh? or you give them cup or a set of tea you gave them gifts not a blessing now there's nothing wrong with that they will carry those things and somebody can steal it but when you speak over their lives those words remain and start working so this guy was supposed to fail remember when he gets to the place where he wants to fail that word is a spiritual buffer it starts doing something to him to make sure he goes away from trouble there was supposed to be trouble. Ordinarily, he would have been a victim. But something that was on him will move him. The Lord knows how to deliver the righteous. There is something that you can receive. And where there is a job that is your own, you find yourself moving there. You are not moving. Something is moving you there. This is what creates favor in life. It looks like a repetition of coincidences. Everything good that is about to happen, you call them, they say, I just heard about it. Must you hear about everything good? Then th that grace makes sure that nothing good passes you without you not hearing it. The same way someone can put something negative on this lady and she will come. Someone wants to marry her and what is on her will make sure that guy hates her and everything destroyed. I said, what is this? Is it that I'm not beautiful? It's not about beauty. It's about what happened. That's why the Bible says God can deliver men from six things. Yes, seven things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. That men can use words to program something on you and just say, go. Now, you will, because you didn't feel anything, that word remains. This gentleman is standing here. He's supposed to marry her, but something on her is fighting him. You are supposed to get a job. The person promised heaven and said, and just a signature to get that job. But something on you, make sure that your paper is taken away from the list. This is what we came to correct tonight. That by the power of prophecy, that, that something can come upon your life and you will walk out of here and see things that should not happen. Someone can look at you and say, man of God, you are not supposed to move at this spiritual rate. When did you get born again? And you say, it's not my fault. It's what is on me. Something on me draws the right people. And you find out, listen, listen. 
That's why you find out there are churches. You always find the right keyboardist, the right drummer. They are looking for pastors. You find the right pastors. And it's not as if the people are eloquent enough to look for them. There is a spirit. Somebody enters that town and says, I want to come and fellowship with Koinonia. They didn't just come. The day you are announcing your book, that's the day the richest helper in your life is forced to come to the city. He didn't just come. Something on you controls everything around you. So the key is not to try to change things. Buy a new shoe with a negative word on your head. That negative word will tear that shoe and return you back to the way they prophesied on your life. Please take serious what I'm saying. Many arrogant believers will not hear this and will continue to move in circles and circles of shame and regret. In this kingdom, we build, but we prosper and finish what we are building through the power of prophecy. Hallelujah. You have applied for the job. You have submitted it. There's nothing you can do about it again. You don't even have access to the office. You can't call the director. Why don't you send words? Let words enter that office like an arm robber and search where is her file and sit on it. Listen, remember you can't get to the office. But there's something that can get there. I'm not motivating you. Believe me. And that word will rest on your employment letter. And the, the man is pushing everything and he just picks yours now remember the man may not be born again so he can't explain what is happening because he operates in the three-dimensional realm the word and the miracle of favor in it is speaking to his spirit man and because he's empowered by god's integrity he must hear it and he looks and says who is this what tribe ah i the slot is for five people from the north who is this yoruba girl now who knows Maybe she doesn't have a father or mother and they take this. And you get a job that you sit down and say, ah, ah, what is this again? If you don't believe this, then I welcome you to the realm of hardship and suffering where you can almost lose your salvation because of the squallow that comes upon arrogant people. You see people that you think don't deserve it, but they are childlike enough to allow words go before them. Are we together? In the Bible, every time fathers were releasing their children, they would tell them, place your hand upon my thigh. And they would place their hand and speak. Speak over their lives. And say, I've finished, go. Whoever comes again, they say the word has finished. I can talk to you, I can counsel you, but if it's that thing you are looking for, it has finished. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Because we're going to be very, very fast tonight. And I want you to believe. The moment words are coming, don't just hear them as amplified sounds from a public address system. They are spirits. You have to discern it. They are spirits. Oh, may God lift you. It's not just by shouting amen. May God lift you. So the word is coming with a grace for lifting. You receive the word, but you are searching. Where is the grace? And that grace is on you. You go expecting to be lifted. It's as if life owes you lifting. Because there is a word there. And you will be surprised to see the way things just open. Are you ready to pray? Find a corner in the next two, three minutes. I'd like you to declare. Declare and pray. Please pray. Take it seriously. The things that must shift in your life. The things that must change in your life. It's called a miracle service. Especially for those of you who came from far. Please believe. Come upon my life that will give me joy, that will 
bring me breakthrough. I tap into this mystery that is in the book of Ezra. I'm willing to build, but Lord, I know that I will prosper through the prophesyings. Prosper through the prophesyings. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. in the spirit that there are handwritings there are ordinances that are written upon men like a stigma like a karagma the mystery of the tragedy of Jabez was a word that became his name by his mother and Jabez said oh that thou wouldest bless me Lord I'm tired of this situation it's not my fault that I came from this family Words are erasers. They can erase anything. They can erase anything. Because those words are bought by the blood of the eternal covenant. They can erase curses. They can erase yokes. They can erase witchcraft. They can erase pronouncements. Someone spoke against you. Spoke against your family. And said it will never be good with you. Words are erasers. For some of us, before you need something to come upon you, you need something to be taken out of you. Open your mouth and pray. And say something must be erased from my destiny. Those negative dreams, bad luck. I love the Lord. I serve him with all my heart. Harabakato shadekatelekata. Blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us, he nailed it to the cross. Hallelujah. Look at me. 
We are praying. For those of you, almost everybody here uses one or more social media platforms. And a system was programmed that when you forget your password, there are times that you want to access your mail or whatever page. And for some reason, you can forget your password. There is a provision there. It will ask you, have you forgotten your password? And then it will try to do one, two, three things and give you another opportunity to put a new password or remind you of the password you forgot. If in the physical recovery is possible, then how, how much more the realm of the spirit? Someone tonight is going to insist. You it left you to a point that you are not even thinking of it again. And God is saying, no, Lazarus must come back home. You must find it again. Before I begin to pray, open your mouth. Whatever left me that should not leave me, you must return back. Opportunities, dimensions in the spirit. cooperate with me I want us to finish very fast and so tonight I may not really have time to prophesy and speak to people one by one because it would take time but I want you to please believe are we together words can bring things and words can carry things out of your life was it not because Jonah entered a boat innocent people on a voyage a man carried something, entered their boat, they lost properties, lost, they were about to lose their life. And they said, what is the cause of this? And Jonah said, I'm the one. The solution, he didn't say, counsel me, throw me out of that boat. There are things that you don't patch, you don't manage. They must be thrown out completely. There are pronouncements, you must carry them and say, I saw you destroy my father, my mother. You are going out of my by the spirit of might. In the name of Jesus, that you will do a quick walk in this place. I pray, oh God, that within the next few minutes, visit your people. Let it not just be a ritual, but Lord, that you will visit them. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will visit them. I'm going to count five just now. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't do anything. Once I count five, I'm seeing a fire of deliverance. We're going to start with it because people must be set free. I truly believe in emancipation. And the Lord is giving me an instruction to just count five. And then I begin to speak. One, two. The things of the spirit are very strange. I want you to bring them out. Three. My God, I sense such fire. I'm already even seeing four get ready now five let that fire right now in the name of jesus everything in your life that must leave i declare right now by the power that is in the name of jesus the son of the living god by the fire of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ bring them out outside everywhere overflow one two the roadside online I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost the word of God brings every evil from out of their hiding place I declare and I prophesy 
prophesy. I send the word like a messenger of judgment into every family, into every destiny. And I declare that everything that needs to be judged will not escape the fire of God tonight. Therefore, I declare judgment. Judgment upon the hand of the wicked. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Judgment upon the wicked. Judgment upon the wicked. Hallelujah. The spirit I'm taking charge over now are the forces responsible for closed doors. Listen, over life, if you have seen that you stand and a door refuses to open, no matter what you do, something is about to happen to you now. Lift your hands. Father, I declare, anyone here who is under the yoke of a spirit that causes closed doors, shakatabata, now you are ready to shout at the count of three in the name of Jesus. I judge that spirit. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. I command those spirits. I challenge those forces. I send the word. Doors open. Ordinances that close doors. Let doors be open now. Over lives, over destinies. Be open now. Outside, be open. Inside, be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people and I'm seeing chains on their feet. And I'm seeing literal fire like rising from the ground of this auditorium. And I'm going to speak now. When I speak, those chains that I see, Sakotos Katabarakatojetia, you will be amazed at the testimonies that will rise from this month's miracle service. Lord Jesus, I declare, anyone being tied down by any chain, I declare right now, let the fire of the it could be chains that are territorial, it could be chains of wickedness. I command a release right now in the name of Jesus. I command a release right now. I command a release right now. A release right now. A release right now. what I'm seeing now for a long time and then I think last miracle service or so, I saw it again it's, it's a sign and wonder and I don't know why God does it, I'm seeing a map before me now and I'm seeing Kogi State, Kogi State you know what happens when God shows me this, that means people from that state, the power of God begins to touch them, right now in the name of Jesus I declare, the fire of God is going to that state and I declare freedom right now there are ordinances and yokes within that region. When you are from that region, the power of God meets you. I decree and declare now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete freedom, complete freedom. The power of God is still coming, Kogi State. I decree and I declare, if there is anything that is not the planting of the Lord in any of those regions, I uproot it now by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out, please. Overflow one, lift your hands. I stretch my hands right now. I'm seeing a very strange fire. People will start running from overflow one. I'm, I've not prayed that prayer, but I'm seeing a grace for speed. This is the spirit of delay being broken. Overflow one, in the name of Jesus, I declare, may that grace come upon people right now. They will begin to run by the spirit. Run by the spirit. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But the Lord is asking me to stand here. I'm standing here and I'm seeing right here. Just right here. I'm seeing there is something the angel of the Lord is doing. Right here. Shalom. Shalom. 
Toske de Balakata, Shabra Katoske de Kata. I decree and I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus. Let the yokes of darkness, the ordinances of witchcraft, let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. sick people now but I'm seeing the Lord is telling me he's taking away objects from people's bodies physical objects movements around the body that you feel movements around the body right now I declare anyone who has those experiences I stretch my hands now I stretch my hands now the Lord is saying I should stand here in the name of Jesus any movement in the name of Jesus, Sakato Barakata, Entekalakata Kata Kata, Rakata Bakatos, movements in the body. I cause it now in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of God in anyone's body around here, I take it out of your body now. I take it out of your body now. Look at me, my dear, this lady. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands now. I saw fire coming on you. Right now I declare that devil must let you go. I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now be set free in the name of Jesus. All those in front, I declare the count of three. The spirit that manifested must let you go. I speak as one sent from God. At the count of three, let them go. One, two, three, go. Go, go, go. Out of their lives and out of their destinies. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many people are trusting God for jobs? You are trusting God for a job. Just keep your hands lifted. I just saw something that looked like a parcel. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm stretching my hands. Fire is leaving my hands. I'm seeing from the realm of the spirit. And it's come not everybody. But in the name of Jesus. Lord those that are designed to receive miracle jobs. Through these impartations. Where are they oh God? I send your anointing. Kalato Sebahasha. Jesus, let there be miracle jobs to those people by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Who is Yakubu? Oh my God. Now, I want us to pray for the sick. Who is Yakubu? Yakubu, where are you? Oh, it's even you, protocol. Come, your season of lifting has come. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you. Where's your wife? Wife, come. Look at, oh, what a wonderful wife. Again, her husband. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak and I prophesy to you here. Look at what is happening to them. I declare by the anointing of the Spirit, the month of November, two of you will come to testify here. The God of heaven is turning your lives around. One, finances. Two, I'm seeing you climbing ladders in the Spirit. And I decree and declare over you. It must be so right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. If I start speaking one by one time, sir, please come. This man, come, sir. God is about to change your life. Come. Where are you coming? Please stand up, please stand up, sir. Where are you coming from? From Sabongari. I want to pray for you. Where do you stay? Sir. I don't mean to scare you. Are we together now? I'm not a prophet of doom. 
But this you're coming here now has saved you from dying. You have been having dreams. You have been having dreams. Yes. Dreams. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Dead people. Yes, you I see dead them. people in dreams. I have seen them. This is what I'm saying. If you did not come here, I saw that you were somewhere around PZ and a car just came. You're on a bike and that car just hit you and just killed you. That's how they left you on the ground there. But in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the spirit behind, why am I saying God is saving families from the spirit of death? I just saw like an arrow right now. Any family here that any family, I'm seeing like arrows of death. I reverse them. You will know because I'm praying for you. I declare now, now, any family that the devil has found that there must be an obituary. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, freedom, death, leave the God's people in the name of Jesus. The God of wonders will do wonders in their lives. Agree with them very quickly. Please don't doubt what you are doing. Those who are standing, trust God to touch you. Trust God to return with a testimony. Who have come with all kinds of situations. Arise, O oh God, in your power. Wrought wonders. In the name of Jesus. Let your people return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Quickly, please. Please. Um accept the people speak to you and i would please let there be minimal um, personal speakings because we have to rush as hands are laid on you please believe don't say it's not apostle that is laying hands on me it's a corporate grace that is working here and for those of us who are seated the worship team will be ministering but don't just sit and just be looking i like you to believe because immediately after this i'll be doing the prophecy and the impartation and we'll be trusting god to turn things around if you have your prayer request while the service is going on whether you are here or just wave it and then there will be people pr protocol please join the people so that we'll make it fast lord we thank you in the name of jesus christ god bless you and as we worship in your presence there is healing the holy spirit gentle
Say in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare and declare that every delayed promise, say it again, that every delayed promise must manifest before the end of this month. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, delayed promise. Make sure you are praying. Every delayed promise in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hold on. Medically speaking, after nine months, when they give a woman EDD, sometimes it can seem to cross with a few weeks. The doctors give plus or minus. Is that true? And by the time it exceeds, it becomes an issue of concern. And then the doctors have a system where they can induce the woman or at least go through CS. It doesn't matter how that blessing must arrive. Lord, I declare it is time for me to walk in it. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Every prepared blessing that the prophetic word of God has made available, I step in. Every 
every prepared blessing prophesied. Shabaka to koto peke teke teke te. Seke te braka to shkala baronda. E teke 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 te. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace to discern my miracle. Because you see sometimes a miracle may not come in a way that you see it. Are we together now? Who would have known that it was the little jar in the house of the woman who was already owing that will save her? Sometimes your miracle is there, but God must open your eyes. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus, Lord, I receive discernment. Cause my eyes to be opened to see my miracle in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cause my eyes to be open. name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the last prayer point, I'd like you to declare, say in the name of Jesus, Father, bring speed to my destiny. Let me tell you something, except you are not living on planet earth, there are times that God will desire for certain things to happen in your life, but for whatever reason, those seasons can pass and you will not step into it. Now, God must give you speed to be able to catch up with what matches the pace of your life. Pray this prayer and you will watch God answer. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, for my years of delay, I receive supernatural speed in every area of my life. Open your mouth and mention every area of your life. Lord, I would have gotten admission 10 years ago, but for some reason I was delayed. Give me speed. Give me speed.
online I want you to believe pray believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this is not a ritual this is not a formality there is an anointing there is a grace there is a covenant that makes for this request to be answered prayers Paul said for this cause I Paul bow my knees I bow my knees I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you visit impossible situations O God of heaven in the name of Jesus Christ Father I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit you have brought strange miracles to men and women by reason of this mystery. Father, I declare there are people here who have written things that only you can solve. Things that if we see with the eyes of men, it will even challenge our faith. My God, surprise everyone. Please agree with me. Surprise everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ, let every need represented here, whatever that need is, I agree right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, let every need here be turned into a miracle. Any human agent that has vowed that this request will not be answered, may the fire of judgment come upon them now. Remember, all blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men away from you. All blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men. So whether it's from God or from Satan, men play a role. I say it again in the name of Jesus. Everybody who the devil wants to use to play a negative role, to sabotage what God has answered, what he has done in your life. Let the fire of judgment rest upon them now. Let me give you an instance. If God destines that you are the one who will lift your family out and be great, and Satan programs a man with a gun to kill you, you know what that man has done? He didn't just kill you. He stopped the word of God from coming to pass in your family. I'm saying it again. Any human agent, if you don't like it, just say amen to the one you believe. But any human agent that stands the way of prophecy over your life, may the word of God rest like fire upon them.
when a man is supposed to give you a job and gets angry because something happened and packs all the employment letter and shelves it and they forget about it for the next two years. The guy to help Joseph came out and forgot him for two years. It was after two years by the mercy of God, he said, I remember my wrong. So he acknowledged it was wrong. I pray whoever has forgotten you that must remember you, may they remember their wrong and may they correct it. anointing and every grace that God preordained that should be resting upon your life, your ministry right now and by some activity of darkness it has not yet touched your head I declare may that unction rest on you now may that unction rest on you now may that unction rest on you now you about words. Never forget, words are trains. God is serving you something. He's only using words. Are you ready to receive the prayer of favor again? Don't say you have said it before. Remember that they build and they prosper through the prophesying. Not once. Jesus, your Jesus, Touch the eyes of a man and he said what do you see this is the word touching a man's eyes he said I'm seeing but I see men like trees Jesus said nonsense he touched his eyes again and he saw men clearly if he, if he was left like that listen we want to we want to destroy the spirit that aborts complete miracles so the miracle starts in your life but never finishes have you seen people like that it starts in your life but never finishes in the name of Jesus because according to scripture if the hand of Zerubbabel starts a thing that hand should complete it I'm praying right now every miracle that has started when Elijah saw the rain like the fist of a man's hand it didn't stop as a fist it became an abundance of rain therefore I declare what you have seen like the fist of a man's hand it must come to completion in your life it must come to completion in your life. So you get a job, but they say you need an interview. You pass stage one, you pass stage two. They even give you small pocket money and you are happy. It's almost as if you are employed. Then when the final list comes out, your name is not there. A lady sent me a text crying that a gentleman came and paid her dowry and ran away. What did he do? He paid her dowry and ran away. It's better that that lady were never married than the one that you gathered people, they paid your dowry, then he ran away. Let me say it again. The Bible says, he that has begun this good work, except it's not a good work, what my God has started in your life, in the name of Jesus, it must come to end. Let me pray for your family that in the name of Jesus, whatever has brought pain to your family, whatever has brought shame, whatever has brought distress, Right now I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. We come from different families and we know the various challenges that we left from our different families. Therefore I prophesy to you right now in the name of Jesus that every challenge you left from your family, let that challenge be turned into a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Let me prophesy a very serious prophecy for you. Everything you saw from January that God vowed with his integrity in the place of your retreat, he showed you things. 
you know it's not guesswork. You know that God told you certain things, but you have not seen it come to pass. I release my faith with you and I command October to deliver the result for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone who is in ministry here, I want to pray for you. Whether it's an evangelical ministry, you are a missionary, you are into a prophetic ministry, whatever is making it to not work, or whether it's a prayer group, a fellowship, I stretch my hands, I strengthen your hands in the spirit, fresh fire upon the work that you do. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is anyone in anger who made any pronouncement over your life, it could even be your biological parents. I stand here by the privilege of the prophetic and the apostolic and I declare that that statement is erased from your life. Those in business, I pray for you. I decree and declare the spirit that brings fruitless labor you labor so much and yet nothing comes to fruition I cast that spirit from its root now let me pray again in the name of Jesus that everyone trusting God for a miracle job I don't care how long you have waited in the name of Jesus the name that is above every other name I speak to you may the Lord surprise you The Lord is showing me a medical doctor that an appointment is coming for from Abuja, one of the hospitals in Abuja. As I just prayed this prayer, I saw it in the spirit. We establish it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone, nobody has ever truly applied for a visa and gotten it in your family. It doesn't matter how many times they apply. And the reasons are legitimate. I speak by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May the favor of God open the doors of nations for you. Hallelujah. One way the spirit of poverty, listen, eats up resources from people is through the mystery of terminal illness. Illness that your money must finish before the person now dies. Are we together now? It's a wicked spirit. Because you can't sit down and watch your loved one in pain. You will liquidate everything you have to help them. When the entire family is drained, then the person just goes. I declare, if there is anyone with any terminal illness that is sapping resources from your family, may the healing power of Jesus touch them and quicken them now. Favor is a spirit. I stretch my hands and I declare in the name of Jesus from today, carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. In one minute, wherever you are, open your mouth and let's pray for Kaduna State. Blood-sucking spirit will curse you. Pray! We declare peace upon our borders. Pray for the families that have been bereaved. Lord, by your mercy, let there be peace. We prophesy peace in Zaria, peace in Kaduna State, peace in Jos. Peace in Adamawa, peace in Benway. In the name of Jesus, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. We fortify our spiritual borders. Please pray. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Kaduna, hear the word of the Lord. Let there be peace. We pray for the spirit of love. We pray for the spirit of love, the spirit of unity.
Christians, Muslims, free thinkers, that together in the name of Jesus, there will be a bond of peace. Hallelujah. Number one, make sure you do not use the social media platform to your detriment and the detriment of the church. Are we together? Passing nasty comments and things that may not make sense that can aggravate um, crisis and all of this we are matured believers we must have the wisdom to be able to respond this is not about Christians it's not truly about Muslims it's about the devil finding agents masquerading through religion and politics to destroy the program of God so the issue is not just about Christians it's not just about Muslims and all of this my perspective as a person has always been to demonstrate love because we believe no human being, regardless of religion, acts wicked on his own accord. They are motivated by dark spirits that manipulate their minds. So when we challenge, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we speak and settle realities in the realm of the spirit. These are the spirits that can use anybody. If brothers kill brothers, then anybody can kill anybody. When the spirits are at work, our responsibility as believers are, is to challenge the controlling powers that manipulate the destinies of people. Number two, please, there are families that have lost loved ones. If there is any way you can support them, whether in prayer or through whatever means, it is a very welcome development. Are we together? And then finally, I would encourage us, we have prayed, but we are responsible people. It is wise to be vigilant, especially for those who live within the Kaduna metropolis and then Joss, Adamawa, Benway. We will continue to pray and speak peace. It says, give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem. So we will continue to pray, but it's wise to be vigilant because there are certain kinds of death. The Bible calls the death of a fool. Are we together now? It is wise that we are vigilant. By God's grace, whatever information we have, a brilliant intelligence system that feeds me with whatever information. And if there is any cause for concern or any action, there is an intelligence system to reach everyone. Avoid spreading rumors and avoid moving around. Your job is just to continue to pray. For believers that have for any reason gone to be with the Lord, it shouldn't start creating a subject of debate where we argue and do a lot of childish things. When believers go to be with the Lord, let's stand by the families and encourage them and speak words of hope. While we continue speaking life, let me balance this. Because if, if God forbid, but if I die today, it does not cancel the fact that long life is the will of God for the saints. So on one side, while you weep and mourn for what has happened, the word of God is bigger than any man. I'm saying this because sometimes Satan uses these things to discourage the body of Christ. Let God be true and every man, including the best of us, be a liar. So make sure you continue to stand on your convictions. Be sympathetic to people. Don't be emotionless about the things that happen to people. But maintain your stand and your conviction about the integrity of what God has said should be. Are we together now? I speak to everyone here. The covenant of protection. You have to know the blessings that accrue to this ministry that you are part of. I declare in the name of Jesus, the grace that has protected us, the grace that has protected this, this ministry, may that grace speak in your life. Yeah. I forbid the earth, not the sword, from receiving your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you. Like we prophesied, October is not done yet. Between now and 31st of October, in the name of Jesus, the balance of what must enter your hand, may the God of heaven arise and put it in your hand. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There was a brief charge today. And while you were speaking, the Spirit of the Lord was convicting me. 
that I need Jesus. Or number two, that I need to make my ways right with Jesus. I love Jesus, but I feel a need for a restoration. Please, wherever you are, we have just a minute or two for you. I'd like you to boldly leave your seat. Please, every time we make an altar call like this, give the people a chance to come. Don't intimidate them. Let there be no movings and let the people come. Wherever you are, you are saying, Apostle, if you will lead me to Jesus, I will gladly hand over my life to him. Wherever you are, I want to pray for you. Please leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here. God bless you for your boldness. People are coming. Outside, are you coming? Make your way quickly. God bless you. Make your way. Jesus is talking to someone. This is a time when you should hearken to his voice. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you're coming from outside, please run. You will need to double up. Run quickly. I want to pray now. Let's celebrate those who are coming. Let's encourage them. No man comes to Jesus except you are drawn by him. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. There are still a few people. We give you a few seconds. Run quickly. Join them. Those online, you're connecting online. Be ready to pray the prayer with us. There's no time. There's no distance. God bless you. Keep coming. I see a gentleman coming. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I salute all of you who are standing, whether giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or rededicating your life. May the Lord bless you. Lift your right hand quickly. Those joining, join quickly. I'd like you to say this sincerely from your heart. Jesus is here and he loves you. Always ready to give you a new beginning. The Bible says, to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Look at this, my adorable children. Make sure you say, Lord Jesus, too, dear ones. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. That you are the son of God. Tonight, I accept that I cannot help myself. And I ask that you be my savior. You'll be my Lord. You'll be my King. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he was raised from the dead for my justification. And right now, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I am saved. I'm a child of God. Amen. Jesus, thank you for these ones. You have drawn them by your spirit. Let the grace that saves, let the grace that keep rest upon these ones. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will go from glory to glory. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the door is open for you to a new and a better life. In the name of Jesus, from today, you move forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I salute you once again. Thank you for this very bold decision. Please follow the lady smiling at you with her hands waving at you. Just follow her and there will be a group of people to just address you. Please cooperate with them very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching